what's up hello today's video is about my favorite books to reread if you have noticed it all sort of the the theme that's been running through all of my answers to all of my questions on this channel for a couple months now um, I do have a serious love of nostalgic books books from my childhood um, children's fiction and also uh, books that sort of evoke really nice memories for me. Um, while Becca is sort of our reader who forges into things that she's never read and, and loves to explore different styles and genres and things like that, I am much more um, the side of things that likes to, to have a very nostalgic, comfortable look at back at what I'm reading. And this is something that I'm actually trying to break away from a little bit this year and read books that I might not ordinarily. But today I thought I would settle down with my collection to talk about my top books that I love to reread. So the criteria that I set for this were that I had had to have read the book at least three times and in the times that I had reread it none of those could have been assigned for school or some other reason. To start off I have a book that is probably a fairly good guess it is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, so there are seven books, if you don't know, in the Harry Potter series, and this one is my favorite. Out of the seven, my top two are definitely Prisoner of Azkaban and Half-Blood Prince. And I come back to this one, which uh, honestly I've lost count of how many times I've read it. I think it's over 20 at this point, and it's sort of hard to explain. Interestingly, this book does not involve Harry battling Voldemort directly. Um, this is a book where things turn noticeably darker and Harry sort of finds his way into really the exposition that is necessary for the rest of the books. Um, he discovers a little bit about his past, about this man who is said to be on the hunt to kill him, Sirius Black, and I think it's a really nice deviation from the rest of the series in which he's definitely going after this goal of, of figuring out who he is as a wizard in the whole wizarding history and, and knowing that he sort of has this big task to do, which is to defeat this evil person. Um, and I, I think this is a nice break from that, as is Half-Blood Prince, um, and it's just heavy in terms of exposition and, and understanding Harry's past, and I think I enjoy that a lot. And so I have come back to this book time and time again. I think it's got some really funny moments in it. And uh, Hermione not only makes it clear that she is most definitely a Gryffindor and is also wildly intelligent in an academic setting, but also it's it's noticed by her teachers that whole bit with the time turner. You know, she's taking all of these additional classes. She finally gets some recognition for the amount of academic rigor she wants to pursue. And it's clear that that is not only helpful uh, for saving Buckbeak, but also for her friends as well. The next book I always come back to is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. This book was so, 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 so hyped. It was quite emotionally intense, uh, and it relies on very intelligent characters, um, and, and reliance on intelligence in those characters in the face of very clear adversity. This novel is definitely an emotional journey for these two characters. It's, it's two people who are just trying to live their lives, and they rely on so many things every day to just get through what is a very challenging way of living. And I think in moments where anyone is feeling where it might be difficult to keep going, I've found this to be a very inspirational book. Um, Hazel is such a quick, sharp character, and she knows so much and so many pieces of what she loves uh, academically and in her, her spare time, and the, the way that she forges relationships with other people and, and considers her impact on others, I find that really interesting, and I think that's one of the reasons that I've come back to this time and time again. F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, you can tell this is not the copy that I've read over and over because the copy that I have read over and over is really beaten up, uh, but Gatsby is a character who is perpetually misunderstood by literally everyone, and I think including himself. Uh, this book, there always seems to be some new, like, literary commentary or literary critique about, oh, here's what we can derive from The Great Gatsby in today's age, or things you never knew about The Great Gatsby, or The Great Gatsby explained, or things like that. This, is, this book is so, so picked apart. I've read this, I think, three or four times now. Um, 
and it's it's something that is so laden with symbolism, as, as we all know, but you can always rely on that symbolism being there. Every time you read this book, you know what the things that you're going to look for are, you know where they're going to appear, and the fact that people keep trying to discover something new about this text over and over sort of drives me to want to reread it to see if I can sort of suss out the same sort of things that they are finding as, as new discovery type items with this text. And that potential for discovery, I think, is what draws me back to this, as well as just his perpetual melancholy, which is always nice to read about when you one one is feeling melancholy themselves. And lastly, if you've followed us for really any length of time whatsoever, you know what my option is going to be. It is The Truth About Forever by Sarah Dessen. This is a YA novel. It is my absolute favorite of hers. Again, I couldn't tell you how many times I've read this, as is evident by the dilapidated paperback copy that I own. This is just a young summertime book about this girl who has walled herself off from all emotion in the wake of a tragedy in her family and she spends the summer rediscovering or perhaps discovering for the first time in a new way what it is like to really love and enjoy life and I think that it's funny that I've read this so often because every time I read it I feel like I'm coming back to memories that aren't actually mine. Like I come back and I remember, oh that's right, you know, this is what Macy does in this chapter and this is how this chapter is going to go and oh those are the th few things that are going to happen next and I remember it as if it had happened to me but it's never happened to me. Uh, and I, I take from this book a lot of a lot of feeling and it seems like there's a theme of, of real like feeling through all of the books that I have selected here today. Uh, but you know, they all are definitely meaningful. All of the characters in this book uh, serve a purpose in bringing her through this emotional journey and I think this one out of almost all of the Sarah Dessen books that I have read is it's obviously my favorite but also I think the most the most well written and I do like to read them all because they all sort of have that easter egg theme where uh, different people and places in different books show up across the rest of the books which are not a series but are all connected. Um, just a really great young read, reminds me of my youth, was very formative for me and obviously had to make this selection. I originally wanted to have five books for this video uh, but I could only come up with four that I felt really strongly about and also fit the criteria. Uh, one which is a runner-up that I wanted to just mention very briefly here is Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. This is a very busy cover for this book um, but I own two copies and this is the the Penguin Threads edition where you can see all of the the stitching on the inside which I really like. Uh, I think it's beautiful. It's a very nice copy uh, but more to the point this is just a coming-of-age story that highlights the the many many facets of these girls who grow up to be wonderful young women and I think that this is an old story that never gets old and if I had read it three times it would definitely have made the the top four but it, here it is as my runner-up. Obviously there are probably at least a dozen more books behind me that I have read you know more than twice that could have easily been included in this video but these were the top four that I really felt I continuously come back to for very pointed uh, very personal reasons and I would love to hear the books that you always go back to to reread. I know there are a lot of people out there that don't like to reread books um, but it is something that I really enjoy and so if there are books that you always find yourself coming back to leave a comment tell me what those are if you also would consider any of my top four or five um, ones that you would include in your list let me know I'd love to chat about it. I hope you're having lovely weeks and lovely lives and we will see you very soon.